Bandwidth for this podcast is brought to you by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Welcome back to MacBreak Studio. As you know, we put a lot of MacBreak episodes out on the web, and we have a lot of you commenting about them. And by the way, we really appreciate it. We actually read them, and we respond to them. And every now and then, we... We end up having to correct some things. We, we learn said. something. We learn stuff, <laughs> right? And so um, today, Mark's going to uh, walk us through uh, replacing and relinking something he did earlier, but he has a new take on it. He wants to show us some stuff related to it, make it exactly. better. Exactly. Okay. I wanted Excellent. to. Somebody pointed out. I, I, there's something I missed in uh, episode 264 that a couple folks pointed out, which I really appreciate, and I want to bring that up. But I want to also provide some more context and give a few other hints as well. So what I'm doing here in that episode, we talked about replacing some temp audio. Mm -hmm. But now I want to look at replacing some temp graphics uh, because the same ideas apply, but we can take it a little bit further. So here I have a map, and all I'm going to do, I purposely haven't put it in the timeline yet, but I'm just going to hit E a couple times to get a couple versions of it in there. So the scenario is you've got a graphic that you refer to multiple times in a project. Right. Because right? often you need to come back to a graphic over and over again in a documentary, and you need to look at it in different ways. So in this example, I've got it in here twice, and you can see it's got black bars on the side because it doesn't like the as match the aspect right. ratio, right? It automatically fits so, it. Automatically fits. So I'm going to select both of these uh, clips in the timeline, go to the video inspector, and scroll down to the spatial conform, and there the type, like you just said, is set to fit. I'm going to set that to fill. So now they both completely fill the screen. And just to make a few other changes, I'm going to go ahead and add a filter to one of these guys. So I'm going to go to my uh, effects here, and to basics and just throw a tint effect on this first one. And on the second one, I'm gonna add a little uh, Ken Burns effect. So I'll go to the crop effect, I'll hit Ken Burns, and I'll just click done, just for a quick, if I move on that now, now there's Slight a little- push in. Yeah, a little push in on that, okay? Which is very common that if you're using the same media multiple times, you might be doing different things to it each time. Sure. Right, different pushes on it, different filters, different crops, whatever. So now the scenario is, okay, I've been using this map, and the customer says, you know what? I don't like that map. Can we use another map? Can we use another map? And I don't want to get rid of all the things I just did to the map. Right. So one option is to import the new map. So I'm going to do that first. I'm going to hit Command I to import. I'm going to navigate to this new map the customer wants. It's an old world map. I'm going to import it. And by the way, we see I've set up this as a, um, a managed library. So I'm copying the files into the library. Okay. I'll click import. And there it is. So you might think, oh, I'll just take this down. I'll drag it on top of this guy and I'll choose replace from start so it doesn't change the timing right. of my clip. Uh, but your filter's gone. My filter's gone, gone. and <laughs> look, a black bars are back, oh. okay? Oh so, yeah, that's a hassle. So that's a, yeah, that's a hassle. You're gonna you gotta apply them all over again. So here's a way you can still do a replace edit, but keep all of your effects, all of your transformations, okay? That's, that would be fantastic. So yeah. what I'm gonna do is select this clip and hit Command C first to copy, copy. it. Right, and now I'm gonna do a replace edit, replace from start, and it looks like we've lost everything, but then I'm going to choose Edit. Paste Attributes. Paste Attributes, exactly, because it remembers that. And here I had a tint effect, and I think that's all I did. Oh, I did a spatial, spatial conform. conform. Spatial you know, conform. i got to say something. Yeah. Uh, this Paste Attributes window is so much better than previous versions. Yes. Final Cut. I mean, there's, I mean, you could name. Extremely detailed. You know, it's detailed. Spatial conform, color. I mean, look, compositing. That right. just wasn't in the previous uh, Final Cut no. uh, Paste Attributes window. Super powerful. So that's great, and then I could do it on the next one too. Uh -huh. Command C to copy, bring this guy down, choose replace from start, and then edit paste attributes. Command Shift E. And in, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and in this time, I really want the crop because the uh, Ken Burns effect is a crop effect. So I'll select crop, and now this first one has the tint, the second one yes. has the little move on it, and we're all happy. Yes. However, you notice I had to do that two times, yes. and if I had this clip in here 20 times, it would be a lot, be, right? It would be uh, the part right. of Department okay. of Redundancy Department. Yeah. So here's where we get back to the relink idea. So I'm going to hit Command Z a few times to get back to where we were. Mm. So here's our original one. I'm also going to go back to this clip I imported and hit Command Delete. Now this is, can be a dangerous command. Command Delete says I'm going to move that media to the trash. That's because it's the last instance of the last clip instance, in the library yeah. is why. If it were still in the project, this wouldn't be fine. It. Right, but it's really the only yeah. thing there. Right, so I hit delete, and now it's actually taken it completely out of the library. It is gone from mm -hmm. the library. If it were external, it never, Final Cut never deletes external sources. Never, right. right. But That's it's one internal. of the rules. Right. 
So here's the thing I'm going to do, and this works particularly because I'm using still images, and I'll talk more about it in a second. Instead of going and replacing each one of these, I'm going to go to the source image here and choose File and Relink Files. Okay. Okay. Rather than replacing the timeline, I'm going to relink that source object to a new file, and then everything in the timeline should reflect that. So Relink Files. This is the file I want to relink, and I'm going to relink it to this other file right here. Completely different one? Completely different wow. file. Yeah. And because it's graphics, it can be a different uh, doesn't size. Matter. It right. doesn't matter. Right, it's this not going to, the Final Cut's going to say, oh, wait a minute, yeah. the yeah. audio files don't match, the right. And whatever. that's the restriction. Right. This works for graphics, it works for audio, as long as the audio configuration number of channels is okay. That's right. With video, you've got to match the codec and the duration. Uh, and not, This doesn't work great for video, right. but for something like this, it's great. So I'll click Choose. And now, to get to what I missed in that episode 264, 264. right? <laughs> I said, oh, you do this, and then you have to consolidate afterwards. Yeah. But you don't, because at the bottom here, I'm surprised I missed zoom that. in, yeah. is a copy files to checkbox, which in that episode was checked, okay? Yeah. So not only is this going to relink to this new um, piece of media that is not in my library right now, it's just, you know, somebody mm -hmm. sent it to me, it's also going to go ahead and put it into my library for me, or if I'm using an external uh, media, I could choose to go ahead and put it somewhere else. Nice. So this thing is great right here, and that's the thing that I missed before. So uh, I'll hit Relink Files, and right away, our new uh, map is here in the browser, and in the timeline, we see the effects are still applied, and both are done at once. Okay, so if you had 30 of them, it would all be done at once. <sighs> that's, okay. that's pretty big. So caveats are video is probably not going to work unless it's the same kind of video, you right. know, the same length and everything. Great for graphics and audio. The other thing to be careful about is because you're relinking this, if you have multiple projects, it's going to relink all of them. Right. And sometimes you don't want that. Like if you're doing a series of shows and just swapping content out, you'd want to put each show in its own library. Or... Right? Or why wouldn't you could just duplicate a snapshot? No, no. because they're all, you're relinking oh, this underlying of source media. Yes, that's right. So, Good so point. if you put it in a separate library, then you're okay. So all that's right. something you need to be a little bit careful about. But in a situation like this, it works great. So I wanted to kind of address that thing I missed, but also hopefully give a few tips about replacing or relinking media. Really useful, very huge. So anything else? Or is no, that that's, it? that's all right. the whole thing. All yeah. Very useful tip on uh, swapping out graphics uh, under the hood of Final Cut Pro and bringing them into your library. Don't forget that little checkbox. Yeah. Anyway, um, check us out on our next Mac break. Follow us on Twitter. Check out our training library. And we thank you again for watching another episode of Mac Break Studio.